So we have a 38 weeker born with meconium and choreo. We have been moving the chest with ventilation, correct? Yes, we've been moving the chest for 30 seconds now. The CO detector has weak color change. The heart rate is still not coming up and we've already tried our corrective measures with Mr. Sopa. I think the weak CO2 reflects low cardiac output. However, the heart rate is not coming up above 100, so we need an alternative airway. Does everyone agree? Agree. agree. Okay. So with a 38-weeker, let's go ahead and get a one blade and a 3.5 ET tube ready. An alternative airway may either be an endotracheal tube or a laryngeal mask airway. Everyone involved in the care of newborns should know the basic equipment, supplies, and measurements needed to successfully place an alternative airway. The correct endotracheal tube size is based on estimated weight or gestational age of the baby. 2.5 for less than 1,000 grams, 3.0 for 1,000 to 2,000 grams, and a 3.5 tube for greater than 2,000 grams. The LMA for newborns is a size 1 for most brands, though sizing is not standardized. Choice of laryngoscope blade size is chosen on size and gestational age of the baby. A 1 blade is for term, a 0 blade is for preterm, and a double zero blade used for the extremely preterm. Attach the blade by pulling it down toward the base of the handle. Be sure to check that the light is working before you use it. The depth of endotracheal tube insertion is the distance from the tip of the tube to the baby's upper lip. There are two methods to estimate this depth. The NRP program provides an initial insertion depth chart. Simply find the gestational age of the baby you are intubating and the depth in centimeters is given. Insertion depth is also estimated by the length between the nasal septum and the tragus of the outer ear plus one. To intubate, place the laryngoscope blade in the baby's mouth. Place under the tongue and lift up. Lift up in the direction of the handle and be careful not to rock back. With the blade, gently lift up the epiglottis so you can visualize the cords. Knowing your upper airway anatomy will guide you. Insert the endotracheal tube from the right corner of the mouth so as not to obstruct your view until you are passing through the cords. Then, hold the endotracheal tube against the hard palate and remove the blade. To place an LMA, deflate the cuff around the mask and remove the syringe. Open the baby's mouth and press the tip against the hard palate. Advance the LMA inward with a circular motion. Stop advancing when you feel resistance, then inflate the cuff to seal the mask over the airway. Initiate PPV and check for CO2 detection as you would for an endotracheal tube. I'm ready to intubate. I have your blade and handle here and I have your ET tube. Okay. I have a lot of secretions. Can I get some suction? Can I get some cricoid? Holding cricoid pressure. Okay, I see the glottis and the cords now. Okay, I, I see the tube going through the cords. Great, we have color change and the chest is moving. I hear breath sounds equal bilaterally and nothing over the stomach. Okay team, to recap, we are intubated. The heart rate has increased some. We need to give 30 seconds of effective ventilation through our alternative I'll airway and see how the heart rate responds. I have the ET tube taped at 8.5. Okay, meanwhile, let's get ready for compressions to start in the event that the heart rate does not improve further. The primary methods to confirm that the endotracheal tube is in the trachea is a rapidly increasing heart rate and the detection of exhaled carbon dioxide, CO2. Other signs will include equal breath sounds in both axilla and chest rise during PPV. There should be decreased or no entry over the stomach and little or no air leak from the mouth. No single sign is perfect and you must use all these signs with good judgment to decide if you are successfully intubated. Okay, the heart rate is not above 60 and I'm sure we are intubated and giving effective ventilation. Corey, please start chest compressions. I'm going to 100%. Starting chest compressions at a three to one ratio. One and two and three and breathe. One and two and three and breathe. One and two and three, breathe. One okay, Vanessa, two, can you please let me know when one minute has passed and we'll recheck heart rate. Also be prepared to switch out with Corey after one to two minutes of chest compressions. Okay, I will let you know when it's been one minute. One and two and Chest compressions will be done from the head of the baby. Place both thumbs over the lower third of the sternum. Thumbs can be side by side or one on top the other. Push down to compress the sternum and chest wall one third of the AP diameter. Be sure to completely release pressure between compressions without lifting your thumbs off the chest wall. When starting compressions, turn the oxygen up to 100%. Compressions in neonates are always coordinated with ventilation. 
Compressions and ventilations are done in a 3 to 1 ratio every 2 seconds. This will equal 90 compressions and 30 ventilations every minute. Continue coordinated chest compressions for at least 60 seconds before pausing compressions to check the heart rate. Remember that the heart rate on the monitor from ECG or pulse ox will not be accurate while giving compressions, and compressions must be paused briefly to assess actual heart rate. Alright, it's been one minute since we started compressions. Okay, let's pause chest compressions and continue PPV alone. ECG loads are showing the heart rate is still less than 60. Please resume chest compressions. Vanessa, can you switch with me? Jamie, can you please come and place our emergency UVC? 